Hey Bethel family, welcome to today's Convos and Coffee. We are on day three of the fast. If you didn't start with us, that's okay. You can join in today. It's never too late to start. So today we're going to talk about the biblical context of why we pray and fast. So we're going to be reading a lot of scripture today. Uh, so pull out your Bibles. And uh, But before we do so, uh, let's just define fasting. So Fasting generally in a Christian context is considered a temporary renunciation of something that is good in of itself uh, to then intensify our, our expression of something or, or our need for something greater. Uh, so we fast because we want to see God's work in our lives. And so uh, it's beautiful because fasting um, actually draws us closer to the Father's heart as we continue to seek after him. And so... Um, it's really funny because in Matthew 6, verse 16 uh, to 18, I'm just going to read that really quick, but it says, uh, when you fast. So I think that's really interesting that Jesus here speaking is telling his disciple, when you fast, do not look somber like the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it may not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and to your father who sees what is being done in secret will reward you. And so um, Jesus here is expressing to his believers, to his followers, that when you fast, not if you fast, when you fast and when you pray, do it in secret. Don't stand on a stage and be like, oh, I'm fasting, I'm doing this, but do it in a, in a way that brings intimacy between you and God. Um, and uh, yeah, there's just a few things that I want to encourage you today and, and, and to remind yourself that when it gets tough in this fast, these are the reasons that you are doing it. So one, prayer and fasting helps us grow in our spiritual strength. Um, and it also helps us overcome temptation as we continue to dedicate ourselves to God. Um, Matthew 4, you might remember the story when Jesus was doing his 40 days and 40 nights of fasting. And he was actually led up into the desert. And he was so hungry that the, the enemy decided that I'm going to try to tempt him. And Jesus, turn these rocks into bread so you can satisfy the growl in your stomach. And Jesus depended on God and allowed this situation that had arose uh, to strengthen his spiritual walk with God and to overcome temptation by using the word of God, uh, by challenging uh, the enemy and basically telling him to, to leave him alone. You have no right to say anything and depended on God. And in that prayer and fasting he continued to allow god through the dependence on his on, on on our father god to just x the enemy and overcome temptation um and so this fast depend on god uh for he will help you overcome the temptation to go onto your social media to turn on the netflix to eat that donut that might smell so good um prayer and fasting also Help us express our love and our worship to God. And 1 Corinthians 19 verse 20 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. And so therefore, honor God with your bodies. We can use uh, this time of prayer and fasting uh, to, to love God, to worship him with our bodies by denying our flesh and then replacing that with praise to God. Prayer and fasting can also humble ourselves and help us to depend on God alone. James 4 verse 10 says, Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. 2 Chronicles seven fourteen says, If my people were to call on my name and humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Depend on God during this uh, time of prayer and fasting. And lastly, prayer and fasting strengthens our prayers and strengthens our relationship with God. Matthew 17 verse 21 says, but this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. There are some things in life that we need to pray and fast about. And what better way to start a new year but by interceding and asking God 
to intervene and, and to plan this year ahead of us for us. James 4 verse 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. When we continue to seek God's guidance, when we continue to, to seek after his face um, in prayer and fasting, there's actually an urgency that comes up in our prayer life, which then will ultimately draw us closer to God. And so be encouraged, Bethel family, as you're praying, know that what you're doing is to glorify God's name, to draw you closer to him, to, to humble yourself is then therefore to bring glory to God. And remember, um, Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great, I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Know that while you're praying and while you're fasting in these 21 days, that God hears every word that you say. He hears your cries and he's going to provide the strength and the encouragement that you're, you need to, to walk through this fast and know that what you're doing, Jesus has called his followers to do and, and will, will ultimately bring you closer in relationship to him. Be blessed Bethel family. So excited to see and hear what God does in this season.